we're going to be building a garden room from the insulated panel store. This is a kit and you can build it in one day. Now it hasn't rained for two months, but today it's forecast to rain this afternoon. So we're gonna get moving. But the great thing is if you were building a timber frame thing or something like that, you might have a load of power tools out. But with this, we're gonna have the minimum number of tools out to do the job. And if it rains, well, it rains. It's not gonna do any harm to the actual structure. Now, the first thing you've got to do before you start building any kind of garden structure is you've got to put down a good base. And you've got a choice of doing either a concrete base or a wooden base. Now, in this case, we've used the concrete base. It's a bit more work, but we think it makes a, a really strong foundation. The building isn't over heavy, so you don't have to worry about putting in the kind of foundation you might for doing an extension, but you need to put down something that's not gonna move around. Check the dimensions, make sure you get it level. If you don't have it level, you're gonna be making adjustments all the way up. Get it level, get the dimensions right, and then everything else should just fall into place. Now I said that this insulated panel garden room comes as a kit, and what a kit. And also, the tools to do the job. They don't send you an electric drill, but almost everything else you're gonna to need to do the job is in this kit, including pop rivet gun, the screws, the drill bit, a rubber mallet, tape measure, you name it. And one other very important thing that they've included in with the instructions to encourage you to open and read the instructions, they've given you some refreshments, tea bags and chocolate bars really good instructions. It shows that every component here is numbered up. The labels are on the components and when they're delivered, if you stack them correctly as they come off the lorry, you're going to save yourself an awful lot of work because you get everything numbered in order and from then on it should be just a simple question of bringing each component onto the slab and fixing it. So I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's, I love things like this. This self-adhesive foam tape is used to seal the underside of the base track. I think what we do is we'll finish putting them all in position and then we get the diagonal measurements before we start fixing them. So what it says here, Abe, we've got to measure the diagonals. Yeah, that's a really critical dimension and 6438. Just check that because my eyesight's not as good as yours. Yeah, 6438. 6438, all right. Right, we're way out because I'm about three, four mil over here. I can come a bit bit further towards. Right, so if yeah. you nudge yours towards it, I'll nudge mine. Good? Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect lined up there. Right, I want to come towards you. Yeah. So six, four, three, eight. That's lovely, look at that. You see this little gap? They leave that as a drainage hole because when the panels fit in here, there's no actual seal there. Yeah. So any water that runs down the panels into the channel. It's not going to be a lot. But then out through the bit. gap. So we're going to fix this front one, absolutely flush with the edge, and then we'll recheck those measurements before we fix any more, yeah? Yeah. But the other thing is, you might think about doing this with an SDS drill. I did bring an SDS drill with us to speed it up because it's definitely faster than using this. Even though I might be tempted to use an SDS there, I wouldn't use one there. So the important thing, we've got to peel back this bit of polythene cover on both sides because if we don't, when it goes into the track, it's a nightmare to get out, apparently, so I'm told. All right, mate, got your gloves. Each panel is numbered and needs to go into the track in that order. They're a very snug fit, but don't try and force them because once they line up, they drop down nicely. Just put it down. I'll put it down this in, right? You in? Yeah. Just make sure that the panels interlock and push them up as far as you can. The ratchet strap will draw them in later yeah. on. That's lovely. Hooray! <laughs> there we go. That's in. Okay? All right. Okay? In? Yep, yeah, that's in. Do the inside now. Gently, gently.
tell you what, these are light. They are light. They are light, but they're quite rigid. There we go. That's it. The corner panels will push into the wall, but they need to then be lowered into the track. Okay, that's it. That's it. All right. Yeah. That's the one. These clamps aren't in the kit and you can do without them, but I really like clamping things. So now we've got to rivet that head in. So there's a rivet gun. Used one of those before? Nope. And the rivets. You'll love it. And there should be a four mil drill bit, either in with the rivets or somewhere else. But do you know what? Do you know why I think we're finding this a bit of a struggle now? Why is that? We didn't do this bit, did we? No. We don't have the power of the line. We do not. Do we have one enough for the crew? Maybe. Here. Come on then, chuck it. <laughs> 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 like feeding the seals. <laughs> the beams are pre-drilled, but you need to continue through with the drill to place the pop rivets. These short infills over the head of the door need to be lowered in, but if in doubt, just check the instructions and keep checking the instructions. That's my golden rule. This strap will bring the whole building really tightly together. Just ratchet it up, but don't forget to protect those corners with some foam. The head infill is drilled and riveted. Now this ridge beam is a heavier section still because it's load bearing and it's also a pretty tight fit so you just need to ease it in and push it down. The thing about these screws are self-drilling tech screws, yeah? They've got a rubber head, that washer there. If you over tighten them, it squashes it out and they, they don't do anything basically. So the trick is stop. As soon as it goes through, stop, yeah? And now all it needs is a tiny little Titan. Just squashes that washer, but doesn't squash it out. There. Just like that, mate, look, you're a natural. Well, I've got to be honest with you and say now it's the following morning. We didn't actually manage to get this built in the day. And the reason for that was it really started to chuck it down. It started to rain. And although we could have worked on, the cameraman wasn't happy. All his equipment was getting wet. So we decided to call it a day and carry on today. But really, we're still well in time because we didn't actually start till about midday yesterday. So it's perfectly possible to build this in a day. But what I would say is don't get too hung up on the time because it's not a race. You want to do the job properly. Take your time, read the instructions and do it bit by bit. And if you can get other people to help you, we're doing it with two, but you can use three, four or whatever you like. Stay safe, keep wearing these gloves, keep long sleeves and eye protection. And that way you're going to finish this job without any mishaps. Satisfying click. So you may notice I got myself a different riveter. That other one was all right, but with my arthritic hand squeezing that all the time, with so many rivets to do, I thought, get a better one. It's only 18 quid, so worth every penny. Watch this. One, two, three, and on the fourth one, it snaps, so pull it away. So on the bottom here, we're using these little tech screws with the rubber shrouds on them instead of a rivet. And they're very easy. They're just self-drill in there. And you just make sure you don't flatten that washer too much. Now, when I come round here, I've got a little bit of a problem because we've got all this old brickwork here. And I'm gonna get my right angle drill to do these because 
it's a tight space, but you've got to think about the access. If you're going hard up against your neighbor's fence or something like that, or a wall, you know, and you can't get around the back, then you're just going to have to think about how you just make that bottom fix in there. The remaining sections that close off the top of the wall must go in as sequenced by the numbering. Now, I am guilty sometimes of overthinking things. You know, these have all been designed. We've got the plan, we've got the numbers, so I don't really need to know this, but it just occurred to me that the reason those panels are numbered and that you have to put them in in that order is because you've got a rake on them. That's the fall of the roof from front to back. And if you put the panel in the wrong order, that's gonna really spoil that. And similarly, with all these numbers, if you put these in the wrong order, the mitres won't fit. So, so long as you just, you know, stop thinking about it, follow the instructions, follow the numbers, it's child's play. That back section is actually a lot lighter than the front section because the front section goes over the door. That header is structural. It's made probably of twice as thick steel as this is and uh, it takes a bit more lifting up. And also it was a little bit more difficult to get in. This one has gone in like a dream. Now we put this ratchet strap on earlier on when we put the panels up and we put it in the middle and we gave it a little tension up there. And then we put it at the top, we gave it another little tension up. But when I went to put those last top pieces on, I could see that there was probably about three millimeter gap on a couple of the panels. And you could see because the top pieces didn't quite meet up. There was that little gap there. So what I did is I came around here and said, let's see if we can get anything more on it. That's, that's pretty tight now, that's as much as I can go. And I heard them go clicked in. So it's worth, always worth leaving this on, don't take it off. And just, if you get those little discrepancies, see if you can just give it another little tweak. And um, if, if all goes well, they will close up. It's worth doing then before you rivet the thing, because once you rivet it, you can't go back. Now we're ready to put the roof panels on. And again, the roof panels are numbered, so you get them in the right way. There's a cutout on the roof panel, and that goes on the back of it, because the fall is to water back. That's where the rainwater is gonna come off at the back. So we're gonna put the first panel on, but because I've never done this before, because we've gotta use mastic around between that foam strip, I don't wanna put it on, cover it in mastic, then have to take it off and you know the whole thing will be a mess. So what we're gonna do, we, Abe and I are gonna try a dry fit on the first panel, get it right, mark it up with a felt tip because it's critical that you get the overhangs right. If you don't get those overhangs right, if the thing is slightly off at all, then all the panels all the way along are gonna be off. So you're gonna get a different size gap from one end to the other. So just make sure that you take your time with this. As I say, I've never done it before, so we'll experiment with it. And I think once we get that first panel on, we'll just lift it over to one side, put the mastic on, and then we can just put it back to our felt tip marks all ready to go. So you've got the back there, Abe, yeah. with the overhang. Um, try not to lift it on the metal, try to lift it underneath, otherwise it'll start to peel it off, yeah? yeah. And uh, there was just a point that it's warming up here and we were gonna just have our T-shirts on, but again, we just need the arm coverage. So although it's, you know, not as nice as having bare arms, it's a bit safer. Okay, mate, you're gonna go in first, yeah? You happy there? Yeah. It doesn't have to be right. in position because we move it up to the position. All right. Okay. Yeah. Let me just look outside. Oh, we've another 100 mil at least. Okay, that's 150 at the moment. That's it. That's lovely. Yeah. Okay, you happy with that? How's that look? That's all right. That's fine. 370. 370, check it, and because it's angled, the roof is going to go very, very slightly over that way. That's it. Just where it's useful there. That's it. Through the first one. Give it a little pilot hole there. And the good thing about that is that this self-drilling tip, we don't want it to work until it gets into the tougher metal, really. That's where it needs to do its work, so... We've got it absolutely new and pristine.
Now, although that's hard work, leaning over and doing that, it's better to do that than it is to climb up on the roof and start monkeying around there. We'll leave this final fixing out here because the next sheet overlaps. When that overlaps, we'll put the fixing in. Just come in the middle, take some weight, yeah? Yeah. It'll just help. I think at some points where it's sensible to have three people. Keep coming. Little for work. Okay, so what I'm doing here is using the short ones, the ones we've been using before, they're called stitches, which are the short self-tappers with the rubber washer. And they are just going on the overlap at 450 centers just to close that down, stop it lifting. Because a lot of people don't realize this, but when you get wind, it sucks on the roof. It, 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 it wants to lift it up. It's not that it's being blown off. It's that when you get a strong wind blowing over the top of something, it's like an aircraft wing. It's got that tendency to want to lift it up. So you've got to secure it. We've got good long screws around the side, but these short screws along the overlaps will just give it that extra bit of security and uh, it'll be absolutely fine. They've been tested in storms, these really strong storms. And that, in the part of the world that I come from is called a stitch up. Before we get around to putting the flashings on, I've just got to put this bit of Z trim along the end because that's a flat edge there. And this needs to go on so that the flashing's got something to hook onto. But before I put this on, I've got to put a little bit more foam tape on. I thought I had some left over, but obviously they were calculating for this edge here. So the next thing is put all these little rubber foam strip bits in the front and they've got to go in 80 millimetres in. The foam strips close up the underside of the profile to keep out any windblown rain and also any nesting birds. That's going to be stitched on, but it's clicked in at the moment. Okay. And we'll uh, work out the other side because you don't want to fix this until we work out what yeah. the trim is. There's a kind of an overlap going on somewhere. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. What is it looking like on your end? It's perfect on my end. Don't take the tree out if you can help it. <laughs> jungle, jungle. Leave it there and get the ladder, I'll just hold okay. it. Okay, so now we're going to put a membrane in. Membrane's a posh word for polythene, all right? <laughs> the insulated floor panels are a tight fit, but they give you a fully insulated building. Now you can cut this black polythene membrane first, but I like to bring it up the wall and then trim it afterwards. Okay, so this is the last piece. So fingers crossed this fits, because if it doesn't, I don't know what we do. It's in. That's good, that's fine. I'm happy with that. Okay, I... I'm going to leave it now because the doors are coming in a couple of days. The doors have been supplied by a recommended door supplier for this particular garden room, so they know the dimensions. So that's the last floor panel in, and do you know what? I'm really quite impressed by how sturdy this floor is. Because I always worry, you know, if you do an oversight and you're not using a screen and you're going to put it straight down, you don't want any bounce in it. And I was a bit concerned that maybe there'd be a hollow spot and movement, but actually it's as rigid as can be. So I'm really pleased with that and I'm basically pleased with the whole job. If I had to do another one now, I'd do it a lot faster and I really enjoyed doing it. The only thing I would say is that if you're gonna do it, it's better to have a couple of people, three people would be very good and read those instructions. Read them before you even start, read them again just before you're gonna do the job and just keep referring to them all the way through because it does matter and it saves time in the long run. 
the key thing is when you get that base in, get that base in absolutely to those dimensions. Make sure it's level all round. Just take time to do it. Do it the day before you want to start so that it's in there and you're absolutely happy with it. And it doesn't matter whether it's going on concrete or whether it's going on timber, just make sure it's stable and it's exactly right and level. Because if you do that, everything else will just fall into place and it really is quite an easy job. If you've got neighbors who you're putting it close to the boundary, just check with them, just show them a couple of pictures of the, the garden room or show them the 3D and say look this is what we're doing are you happy with it because the worst thing in the world is if you put it up and you start getting complaints from people or they complain they say you needed planning permission generally you wouldn't need planning permission it falls within the regs as far as the height goes to the boundary and so on but if you live in certain areas conservation area or so on you will need to check with your local authority so I hope you found that useful there's plenty more details on the website about the rooms and the different configurations you get. Don't forget the other thing, you can also just buy the roof, the insulated panel. So even if you were doing something like a timber garden, making your own design, making your own bespoke timber garden room, you can still use their insulated panels and that gives you a waterproof roof and it's absolutely beautiful. It gets over any, any problems that you've got with cold bridging or with warm roof, cold roof. So it's the ideal solution for the job. And while I'm on the subject of insulation, the fact that you've got a piece of metal on the outside, you've got a piece on the inside, separated by that insulation means that there's zero cold bridging between the inside and the outside, which is absolutely fantastic. You don't get that in a house, not very often, unless it's something like a passive house. So I reckon that heating that building is gonna be a really low cost thing. Use an infrared heater or a panel heater and it'll warm up in no time. Now garden rooms can be used for a great many purposes. This one's going to be used as a home gym. It might also become an office later on. But I've seen them used as dog grooming parlours, workshops, studios, and just a nice, quiet, relaxing space to retreat to. And we all need one of those. Mm -hmm.